This past year, I was asked if I wanted to run the New York City Marathon. And I said, well, no more competitive marathons. And they said, well, it doesn't have to be a competitive effort. And I said, you're right. It was the 25th anniversary of my Olympic win, and it was the 40th anniversary of New York. So they thought it would be great if I would come down and run. And so I did. So truly, there is no finish line. And what else has happened recently is I've thought more about there is no finish line because of my interest in the environment and in health care. Um, I believe that uh, sustainability of health and wellness is inextricably linked to sustainability of natural resources and the environment. And I'd like to use running as a platform to tie those two entities together. And because running is pure sport and because there's nothing between our shoes and the road, um, we really do see the effects of climate change in our world today. And having logged the 140,000 miles that I talked about earlier, I feel as though I'm a human barometer for climate change. I've seen changes in the landscape because of erosion and because of runoff. I've seen changing ambient air qualities. I've seen eutrophication of ponds. I've seen green algae blooms happening in coastal waters. And so this is really of interest and of concern to me. And I think this is a new chapter in my life where I can go out and talk about best practices for communities and the benefits of sustainable living. So Nike has made a pledge um, in their corporate responsibility mission to uh, come out with an entire line of what they are calling considered projects. And their commitment is to have all footwear sustainable or closed loop. There is no finish line because everything's going to be recycled or sourced within 200 miles of the factory by 2011, and all apparel by 2015, and all equipment by 2020. So I'm very proud that they're doing their job in um, earnest to try to curb uh, the effects of climate change.